When you buy your new boat, whether it's brand new or new to you, the first thing you want to do is customise it by fitting lots of extras, bits and bobs, like fans for that hot summer and USB charging points and cigarette lighter charging points, even new lamps and spotlights and all sorts of stuff. But you don't know how to do it and you end up paying someone an absolute fortune and sometimes you'll get ripped off too. In this video we're going to show you the basics on how to fit extras to your boat. Enjoy the video guys. Hello, today uh, we are going to look at fitting some extras. One of the things that we get asked quite a lot, um, especially when we're in the marina is uh, at winter in the winter and what have you, is people like to fit extras. Probably the biggest thing that we um, we get asked to look at are um, extra power points. So these type things. This is. Uh, this is one of those double power points from, from Amazon. It has uh, two USB outlets at 5 volts. So USBs are 5 volt. I don't know if you know that or not. Um, and the outer two outer pins are positive and negative on USB. Um, this one provides 5 volts at 1 amp. And it provides 5 volts at 2.1 amp. So it's got a high rate of charge and a low rate of charge. So if you're using something like a screen, an iPad, um, or um, navigational equipment, you're probably going to want the higher output, the, the 2.1 amp. And if you're just charging a, bat a phone battery over a couple of hours, then the smaller one's fine. Now the other one is uh, the cigarette lighter type um, outlet. Uh, they provide uh, 12 volts at uh, about 10 amps is the limit of uh, uh, what these will put out and you usually get one at your chart table sometimes you get one uh, outside on your boat so that you can run uh, you know inflation um, pumps for for stand-up paddle boards or dinghies or that kind of thing now the one thing that we haven't got out the back which I want to fit is one of these now this is an LED spotlight the well, <laughs> I put this on the other day and said to Cindy how bright's that and 20 minutes later she still couldn't read her book so <laughs> they are incredibly bright in fact I've got a, a power supply here um, and if I just touch these wires to this power supply you can see that is um, pretty pretty right um, so what we're going to do is this has got a um, it looks like it's zinc coated metal bracket on um, with two m6 bolts neither of which are stainless and the little brackets not stainless uh, and it's going to bolt on the back of our boat by the solar panels facing slightly down like that so that we can have a, a light out the back when we're a fishing at anchor or um, b when we're coming back um, from the shore at night now i kind of know what um amperage this lamp is but i'm not specifically sure um, and in order to get the right size cable um, I will need to measure how many amps that draws so I'm going to do that today before I fit it um, so I've got my um, my normal uh, multimeter my automatic multimeter and those of you that have been to our website will will see that on our um, shop page we've uh, we've got these uh, for sale 
these measure DC volts but those of you who haven't got this type are more likely to have one of these type of multimeters which is not automatic and um, basically has got three uh, connections on the front uh, one of which is for measuring DC amps so what we're going to do is we're just going to measure how many amps this lamp draws and then we'll do a, a cable calculation make sure that we haven't got too much uh, voltage drop by having um, a cable which is too small now I kind of know already what that is but uh, let's see if I'm right so the first thing we want to do is we've got our power supply here um, this red and black here are uh, power supply from my cigarette lighter over there and I'm just going to push the black into the end of there like so just so that it crimp, crimps in and Cindy's going to just move the GoPro there so that you can see now this is a temporary this is a, a temporary connection so what we have now is we have uh, the black which is the negative from our house supply through our fuse um, connected to this lamp now if we just connect the positive you can see it it, it lights up and blinds me for the next 20 minutes um, and what we've got to do is we have to interrupt that circuit with an amp meter. So when you're measuring volts, you can measure that the, the uh, meter works in parallel. You can go from positive to negative and it tells you how many volts. Let's show you for, as an example. I've set this one to 20. My black lead is in common and my red lead is in volts, ohms and milliamps and I can measure across there it actually doesn't matter which one I put on where but I'll put the black on the black and the red on the red and I'm reading 13.4 can you get that on the camera Cindy? 13.14 volts from that supply so I'm, I'm measuring across um, the poles across the negative and the positive and that's tell, telling me what the voltage is now for amperage what we need to do is we need to measure how much amperage is going around that circuit and so first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this to DC amps which is all the way around there and it starts at 200 microamps it's not going to be there 0 to 2 milliamps 0 to 20 milliamps 200 milliamps 10 amps so that's now set at 10 amps don't know if that's in focus I'll put it on the I'll put it on the GoPro so that is now set to 10 amps and we are going to send the current through this meter now this meter is fused and it won't allow more than 20 amps I think it's through, it's fused at it won't allow more than that through there because with, with sending current through the little tiny circuit in here can't take big currents so it's fused at 15 or 20 amps but the maximum advised measuring is 10 amps so up to 10 amps I lost the sound here for some reason but what I'm actually doing is moving that red cable into the 10 amps DC AC socket on the uh, on the multimeter socket so if I show you that there and on the GoPro that that one socket is designed to take a lot higher amperage so common which is the black, the negative, stays in the common slot. 
and the red, the positive, goes in the 10 amps uh, DC, AC DC current uh, socket. And then I measure in the circuit, the light comes on, and I don't know if you can see that there. Could you hold that meter up, Cindy, because I can't see anything. It's drawing 0.9. 0.95. 0 0.95 amps, so less than one amp. Can you get it on the GoPro? Because the GoPro goes gives a lot more detail. Yeah, so I need to turn this off now because I'll be blind in a couple of minutes. Um, so an incredible amount of light for just one amp of draw. Um, now our our batteries will provide um, 400 amp hours so I could run this lamp theoretically for 400 hours at one amp um, and and still have uh, a, a live battery so because um, it's drawing just under an amp but you so now I know that this is drawing just under an amp I can use an app on my phone and the app is called, I believe it's called Ohm's Law, yeah. And you can download this, I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the description. And basically what it does is it gives you either a, um, a voltage drop calculator um, or it gives you cable calculations, what size cable you should be using. And with an amp, with one amp draw, over that distance that we're going to use I'm actually going to twice the size that I need I can go I can go ahead with a 0.75 per conductor um, cable size actually what I'm going to do is I am going to use a 1.5 two conductor cable which is double insulated and route through the boat and up to the solar panels um, and the reason I'm going slightly bigger is I may want to fit another one of those lights or I may want to fit something else up there um, and the cable that I've got uh, is capable of doing that if I oversize and of course oversizing your cable means that your, your voltage drop is much much lower it will take a lot more more amps it will take four times the amps actually this cable than, than I need um, and so I've oversized it and of course it was the only thing I could get locally. So. so when we're measuring volts, we measure in parallel across two points, a negative and a positive. When we're measuring current for amps, we are actually measuring how much current is flowing around the circuit and therefore the multimeter has to go into that circuit in series. Remember, voltage in parallel, amperage in series. Right, next stage is to thread all of this cable through all of the boat, which means moving everything on the port side in order for me to gain uh, access to the uh, cable conduit that runs down the back of the boat on that side. Wish me luck. There we go. That's <laughs> the only time it's ever been empty. Clean chart table. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the first time in however many years it's not had crap on it. Because you see our freezer here, we did, we've taken the cushions off of the chart table seat and um, now our freezer sits on there because um, it's the only place really it, it well it fits um, and then underneath the chart table we've got our charger inverter and also we've got a little square puff that um, am I allowed to say puff under there is um, our little square kind of footstools thing um, yeah we've got two of those so nobody ever uses the chart table and it becomes a place where you dump everything. Let's put the uh, 
camera back. So we need to get into that panel. Where is it? That panel there. Um, and feed the cable that way to the fuse board and that way to the back of the boat. Now on here we've got some spare um, switches. So these are all kind of fly by wire switches. Um, they don't actually switch the high vo the higher amperage. What they do is they trigger a relay and those relays are in the back there. So um, we've got two spare of those so I'm going to make one of those the lamp outside. So most smaller boats have a switch panel, something like this. It may be bigger, it may be smaller, depending on how many circuits you have. A live feed is brought into the bottom of the panel and then it's spurred off to each fuse and switch so that uh, the switches illuminate when you turn them on and power is provided to each individual circuit. For instance, your anchor light, running light, cabin light, bilge pump, etc, etc. Now, um, even on bigger switch panels, this is the way that they tend to work. All of the load goes through the switch panel. Now, more modern boats have a different type of system. And I'll show you with some circuit diagrams, because this is quite important if you're going to fit extras to your boat. So I've drawn out the circuit diagrams for the two different systems. The first one, the top one, is the one that we've just talked about, where the power comes from the battery through a set of fuses, a main switch, and then up to your panel. Now, I've drawn a little switch in there so that you can see how the circuit is made or broken, and that would then power the lamp. Our system, or the system on a lot of modern boats, is different. What happens is we have a panel which provides low current to a set of relays and those relays then switch the high current a high amperage on and off let's see if i can explain that a bit better this is our switch panel and each one of these switches only switches a small current which triggers a relay the relay closes and allows the much higher current to go to the accessory. And here you can see all of those black boxes are relays. And for each relay, there's a fuse on the board. Now this is, in my opinion, overcomplicated. But let's show you how the relays actually work, because again, it's quite important. So here is the same very simple circuit with a relay. When the switch is closed, that's the switch at the top left hand side, the relay is energised. This little coil here is energised. The coil has a soft iron core which moves down and closes the bigger switch here. This connects the terminals 30 and 87, effectively closing the switch and energising the lamp like this lamp off lamp on lamp off lamp on so why would we use a relay to switch a circuit on rather than a conventional switch well it's because the relays can handle a much bigger current than just a small switch the relays on our circuit board can handle 25 amps some of them 40 amps and just like your windlass, you need a big relay or a big contactor to switch some modern boat's electrical equipment on and off. The switch would have to be massive to do this on a conventional board or switch panel. These relays are used in many places on modern boats. An example of that is the relays on your starter circuit for your engine. Quite often these days, there are a set of big relays which energise the starter solenoid on your engine in order for that to start. If these relays fail, you simply can't start your engine. So in order to get to the cable run to the aft of the boat, we've had to remove all three of these panels. 
and then push the cable through towards the aft. We can then connect it to one of the relay terminals on the panel which is on the immediate right hand side of this picture. So we're in our heads now. This is our sink, it's actually covered in toilet roll. Um, what we've had to do is come at low level through the heads, through there you can't see, and then from low down up here behind our black water tank, and then out along there and add it to that cable run there, which takes us up high level. So that's about a two metre journey so far, um, and it's took us about an hour. I've just changed the fuse over in uh, in there. I'm just about to put this relay in. Um, I didn't have a five amp, but I had a seven and a half amp. Uh, it will protect it. These are the um, these are the relays. I'm going to hold that in there. Come on, focus, 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 focus. There you go. Now these are relays and they've got, you probably can't see it, but they've got a little diode in them and that diode, put it down, where are we? There we go, the, see the diode in the circuit. Anyway, what it does is that it protects your electronics because the electronics don't like spikes. I've got the spares of these, I've taken the ones out that I'm not using, but obviously I need to put one back in for this. I won't... Uh, I won't put the fuse, I won't connect it up at this end until we've got the other end done. But yeah, that's the little relays. So the cables are now through the back of this cupboard here, which is the one that has the black water holding tank in. And past this bulkhead here. And now uh, we are down in this lazarette here. Everything's out. Uh, in order to pull the cable, which you've already done, up this corner and out through one of the scan strut uh, seals, taking our old AIS unit off of the push pit here, and then I'm going to bring the cable up either through this conduit or adjacent to it hoping on there's enough room in that plastic conduit and then up the back but boy what a job yeah I've had to empty all this slot out to uh, to get through and of course the hole that I'd put previously was just too small um, so I had to get the Dremel out and just open it out a little bit yay ho so this is the scan strut type of cable gland you heard me referring to. They are really good. We've got four of them on the boat. Two on the aft for our solar and uh, auxiliary lights. And also two on the main mast for the cables that run up to the top of our mast, etc. Really good. Very waterproof. Never had an issue with them. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. I mean, now move to um, stage three I think you could call it all our uh, kit is out in boxes here had the stainless steel nuts and bolts out and what we've done is we've bolted the little bracket that goes on the back of the lamp come on focus back of the lamp there where are we? it's been bolted up on there I'll show you in a sec and then this end, I have put a male. God, it doesn't like focusing. It's me. Let's try it here. There we go. So a male and a female. Female on the uh, positive and a male on the negative. And the opposite will do on the cable. And just show you where that is. Crikey, the window's got up. Okay, so that bracket is there in the middle of the picture. And just behind that bracket, there's 
some uh, plastic tape because uh, obviously the frame is aluminium, aluminium um, and the bracket is steel for the moment until I can make one out of stainless. I haven't got any stainless to do that but that's the plan. Let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. And then on the and that's bolted with a stainless bolt and the other side of the bolt um, is a plastic washer and uh, a nut to hold it on so that's isolating the steel from the um, from the aluminium until I can get a stainless or a piece of aluminium and make a bracket up and the cables run up the back here all the way through now down through that uh, fitting down behind the engine uh, hopefully the next uh, the next pictures you see will be of it working at night uh, the uh, the evening is drawing in now you see we've got our cockpit lights on LED lights waterproof ones underneath the cockpit table um, we can change the color to any combination of red blue green so that's all colors the red's really nice when you're sailing at night. Anyway, let's uh, let's turn on the uh, the big light. Okay, Cindy. Wow. Oh uh, yeah, that is really really bright. I'll show you how bright it is. This is the concrete behind the boat, and it's yeah. You stand underneath that too long and you'd uh, get a healthy tan. So I am really pleased with that. Uh, and as I say, it draws 0.98 of an amp. So, you know, we can run that all night long and it's only going to draw 10 amp hours. Which is great. LEDs are just unbelievably good, aren't they? Okay, uh, on to the next job. So I thought we'd uh, do 10 top tips at the end of this video and uh, I'd run through them for you just to, uh, well, to help you guys out. So number one is decide the model and type of extra that you want to fit. Uh, ensure it's suitable. Not all fittings uh, and appliances are suitable for use in a marine environment. Check the power drawer. As some equipment is under or overrated and it's quite common um, people put the wrong power rating in watts on a lot of equipment and uh, as a result it draws either more or less amps than you might think so always check it use the current drawing amps and the cable length and diameter to calculate the cable size required again that goes back to um, making sure the cable is right if you use the wrong size cable, it can cause a fire. Always select a higher rated cable and keep the voltage drop below 1%. That's always best practice. And of course, you need to protect it with a fuse. Measure the length of the cable run. There's nothing worse than drawing a cable in and finding out that you've got a cable that's too short. And of course, you need to add a small amount for terminations and bend radiuses, or radii, uh, in that calculation for the cable run. Always use a relay for heavy drawer items. It's not good to be using switches where you've got a heavy drawer of current and causes sparks, etc. And those switches can often get warm. And of course, I'll say it again, fit a fuse at the supply end to protect the cable. Cables are protected by fuses. Support the cable runs at least every 300 millimetres, that's one foot or 12 inches for those of you who are still working in the Imperial. And protect it on the outside of the cable in high impact areas with a plastic conduit. Use quality cable crimps and tools, working slowly and methodically. Fitting extras to your boat can be a really simple job if you just break it down into bite-sized pieces. You can do this. 
you know you can and if you're well still not sure go and look at our videos boat electrical made easy we explain slowly and carefully all about volts and amps and current flow etc etc we start with the very basic laws and we work right up to you doing your own circuit diagrams and understanding exactly what it is that you need to do i'll put a link in the description well i do hope that that video has been useful for you um we chose the lamp because it was pretty simple we've got some fans to go into the uh, master cabin um, two speed fans and we are going to use the existing cabling in fact it's the cabling to this light that you can see behind me when we uh, took delivery of the boat it should have had all LED lights and it didn't it was wired for halogens on these uh, reading lamps and so therefore we've uh, we've got spare capacity um, so we're going to be fitting those if you'd like to see a video on that let us know in the comments um, meanwhile uh, go and have a look at our videos uh, boat electrical made easy I think there's seven or eight possibly nine videos uh, explaining how electricity works from uh, low voltage 12 volt 24 volt up to uh, mains voltage and everything from alternators to starter motors you'll find it really interesting um, I'm sure that you'll get something from those videos there's a, a link in the description meanwhile guys thanks very much for watching uh, thanks once again to our patreons without you guys we wouldn't be making videos and don't forget to leave us a like uh, subscribe ring that bell um, share you know you know the stuff it's all this stuff along the bottom here look i put little icons in just for you see you later guys take care bye